Hello and welcome to this, another Beardy Hammer review. Today we're looking at the Horus Heresy Burning of Prospero boxed set. Uh, today we're basically going to be looking at the sprues. There are a number of sprues in this box. It's a, it's a pretty big box, not dissimilar to the previous Horus Heresy release, Betrayal at Kalf. First of all, let's have a look at the Mark III. These are the ones that I'm most excited about. Uh, I've been using Mark III's for my Warhounds now, uh, using the Forge World ones for a long time. And it's fantastic to finally have these in plastic. So here's the leg sprues. You can see here, uh, looking at some of the front detail, you can see that uh, what they've done here is a very, very similar to the original Forge World release. In fact, if anything, thankfully, the little rivets on it are actually a little bit more detailed. You can see here the front, uh, very similar, very, very similar to the Forge World ones, and then the back, which is basically exactly the same, which is a lovely change, actually. There are some small details. I'll go into those uh, in a minute. Here, having a look at the uh, the arms. Now, uh, see here, there's also a new arm detail here, which includes a pipes along just uh, on the upper arm there, uh, which is a bit of a change, which is quite good. Interesting to see how far it's come. Uh, Games Workshop have come a long way using CAD and scanning to uh, include these details, which actually stand off the miniature themselves. There is some new leg detail you may notice here. There's actually a pipe on the ankle. Previously on the Mark III's, uh, the ankles have basically just had kind of a little bit of a knob there on the side there to show that there'd be some kind of uh, protection and articulation. Now I've got on the side, which is not on all of them, but most of them, uh, a little bit of a pipe and harks back to the other Mark, say the Mark VII, which is it's, uh, particularly prominent on. Uh, here we can have a look at the chest and the weapon sprue. Also, you can see there, pretty cool. Interestingly, for a release that is based around not only Thousand Suns, but also Space Wolves, the heads are included in these, these ones, the, the human heads. They're very generic, very boring. I mean, they, they almost look kind of asleep. You can see here the chain swords, uh, as per the Forge World Horus Heresy books, the troops of the time, instead of having a, a, a knife as, as a secondary weapon, they actually had a chain sword, particularly the, the veterans, they tended to have a chain sword. So this works very well for people like world eaters. This is perfectly set up for you. And here you can see the heavy bolter and also the power hammer. Now, these are the only heavy weapons in there. There's also a, a multi-melter or a melter, should I say, and a, a plasma gun as well. But, but there are no missile launchers or heavy flamers or anything like that. You can see there's some variants here in the heads. Obviously, most of them are going to be your typical Mark III, but you've also got some here with some holes in them, uh, little uh, breathing holes or whatever you call them, uh, similar to other Marks. Uh, and also, you see one or two of them here look a bit like the destroyer heads with kind of the, the, the solid plate on the front. Their bolters, the Phobos pattern bolters, are exactly the same as Forge World. Beautifully done, by the way. Really, really nice and fantastic that they're exactly the same as the Forge World ones. The chests that you get for the Mark III's are blank, like the original Forge World kits. There are, none of them have any details, not even the officer one. So this leaves it open to, obviously, conversion. Uh, they look particularly good if you put the Legion's number across the front of it, a transfer. Um, here's some back detail here, as you can see, nice and detailed. Rivets, looking good. Uh, the shoulder's exactly the same as the Mark III's. Now, the backpacks are split, as you can see here, uh, kind of along those vents on the side. Now, this is actually where you'll find the mold lines for the Forge World kits, and it looks like Games Workshop have decided to basically split it uh, along a, a similar kind of uh, way. A bit of a shame in a way. It's a pity they couldn't do it like the Mark 7s, which are beautifully in one piece, so there will be some detail here that needs to be uh, cleaned up. As far as extra weapons and things goes, you can see here the new magazines, which go on the belts, look really, really nice. A big, big improvement from the Forge World ones, which are very blank and not really very distinct, to be honest. There's also a nice little touch here for Ultramarines and those kind of places, a Gladius included for your officers, so there you go. And here's a shot of the Power Fist and also the Power Claw. Both of these are really, really nice, and so particularly the Power Claw looks, uh, it's really nice to have those fingers kind of separate. Let's have a look at the Tartaros armor now. You can see here that each one of the chests for the Tartaros is unique. The Chains Fists um, are actually separate to the Power Fist, you can see them here, which is perfect if you want to use them for, say, to add as chain blades on bolters, for instance. On another kit, they'd fit perfectly onto the bottom of a Phobos bolter if you're building World Eaters or someone like that. They'd, uh, they'd be great. Uh, here's a Reaper Cannon and the Flamer, also split, as you can see here. And here is the Volkite. This is the first Space Marine Volkite we've seen released. Really, really beautiful. I've compared this exactly to the Forge World one, and it's just, it's spitting image. It's really, really good. Here's the heads from the Tartaros. You can see here mimicking the Mark IV. Really interesting they didn't include Tartaros earlier in the Betrayal at Kalth set. Betrayal at Kalth had Mark IV and Cataphracti. Now, Cataphracti are the same era as Mark III, so it's funny we didn't get Mark III and Cataphracti in this set. In the last set, we didn't get Mark IV and Tartaros, but hey, you know, whatever. 
As you can see here, here's some power fists and also the storm bolters, a couple of other weapons there as well. Notice the cataphracti style leg on this guy here, so it looks like you can mix your armor marks a little bit. And some amazing pauldrons, these just look so, so cool, really awesome. I think you might find these appearing on other kits somehow as a conversion. Here's a closer look at the storm bolters. Here's the power claws and also the officer's torso, which is uh, really nice as well. I, I wonder whether how many people might be using this, these torsos as, uh, on their later model Terminator armor, because it would look perfect. Okay, over to the sisters here, Sisters of Silence. Here's the sprue, the Umbra pattern bolter, and also the original pattern flamer you'd be familiar with if you picked up the original plastic box set back in the late 80s. These weapons are straight out of there, which is really, really cool. Nice little bit of a rogue trader salute there. Here's the shoulder pads, which are really nice. Wouldn't be surprised if we uh, see those starting to turn up on some Imperial Guard officers, because they would look really good, perfect scale. Some of these sisters have separate tabards, as you can see here. And here's the cloak, which I'm sure will be really popular with hobbyists, again, for Imperial Guard models. And to me, the heads on these guys, or ladies as the case may be, look terrible. They're just rotten. There's just very, very little detail on them. Real shame, actually. Real shame. Here's the split bodies, as you can see, as we had with the uh, Mark III's earlier, and is more and more popular with Games Workshop now. Here's the head for the commander. Again, pretty boring. And here's the segmented armor. Now have a look at the segmented armor here. I find these guys really, really similar to the Dark Elder, originally designed by Jess Goodwin. I would be really kind of interested to maybe make one of these ladies and turn them into a bodyguard for a, uh, a Dark Elder Archeon. I think he'd just look uh, be perfect. Really, really tall. So really imposing bodyguard for the Dark Elder. And here's the two-handed swords to round off the sisters. Here's a quick look at the fell hand. Amazing detail. Have a look at the beautiful detail on this. A lot of people don't seem to like this model. They say he's he's too over the top. He's a caricature of the space wolves, but I don't know. I really like the detail on this guy. Maybe spacing it out across other miniatures might kind of make it less caricature-ish, but I don't know. I really like this guy. I think he looks just fantastic. He's Araman, or Araman as the case may be. Uh, he, of course, is the Thousand Sun Sorcerer. A beautiful front plate. Have a look at the detail. The detail on this guy, again, like Fellhand, is just brilliant. What we haven't seen previously is the casualty on his base, which is actually the torso of a Mark III Space Wolf. Nice little detail there. And another little great uh, detail, which is on all these models, the hands are just beautiful. Really, really nice. In fact, if you have a look at the hands along this whole set, really, really nice. Probably some of the set best you will have seen. Just amazing detail. Here's the Adeptus Custodes. Uh, again, lovely detail you can see here. Beautifully done. Really, really intricate. Here are the shoulders for those guys. Again, be curious to see if these turn up in uh, bits boxes all over the world. Uh, here's a shot. Again, I'm probably a little obsessed with the hands. Here's a hand gripping one of the spears. The super details, chests. And have a look at these big legs. Jeez, these are these really are like Stormcast Eternals on steroids. I'm, I'm sure that kit bashing between the two kits would look, just look amazing. Here's the backs, or the backpacks as such. Little vents there. Here's the Sentinel Blade. The standard also is multi-part, which I thought was kind of interesting, so it's quite a large standard. Um, detail on the back here, the pauldrons. So again, like the Forge Rod ones, which had small details on the, on the back of the pauldrons, this is quite intricate details on the back. Here's the head of the custodies. Here's another shot of the hand gripping the spear. I think I was a little obsessed with the hands at the times, but they are really cool. Here's a shot of one of the human heads in the set. Uh, interestingly, uh, yelling, which I thought was kind of interesting for the custodies, since there's meant to be guards. There you go. Guess they're in battle as well. And here's a shot of the arms. So, don't know if they'll be ending up on Space Marines, but again, they might look really good on maybe some, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe some Astra Militara, maybe some Scions, maybe. Uh, here's a shot, by the way, of which dice you'd be using for what uh, weapon. Each weapon has a different dice, a D8, D6, etc, etc. And here's a shot of the dice. And that's it. That's it for our review, having a look at the miniatures of Horus Heresy, Burning of Prospero. Great set, really beautifully detailed miniatures, probably even better than the Kalth ones. And again, very excited to finally have some Plastic Mark III. Thanks for listening. This has been another Beardy Hammer review.